Hey Ratbags, it's Jade. Welcome to a console survival video today. Now, I do this kind of video every year. I give you the heads up what to expect because generally we do get a fair amount of information nowadays about what's going to be releasing. So if you're on Xbox or PlayStation, I try and represent you guys as much as possible. But 2022 is looking really light. Like, it's looking like one of the worst years I can remember for survival game releases on console. I recently just did my top 30 new survival games that are releasing next year, and literally like 25 of them are going to be PC, with only maybe four or five guaranteed to be coming to console. And that doesn't mean there won't be more, We've definitely had it in the past that games have just dropped out of nowhere and suddenly launched on an Xbox or PlayStation. But it is slim pickings. I'm warning you now, if you're a console survival fan, you better get used to playing the games that you're playing right now. There really isn't that much brand new stuff coming next year. So let's go into all that stuff. Leave a like, make sure you subscribe for the best in survival games news. And let's talk about the sorry state of console survival in 2022. So you guys should know that I try and represent console as much as possible. I am a console pleb just like you. I've always preferred playing with consoles. I never had a PC as a kid. And so while I do play on PC a lot more now, because it's part of the job giving you guys news, previews about these games, I still, whenever I can, always try and request an Xbox or PlayStation code as I just like it, it's better for me. It also helps my system, means I can usually get a lot less running on my actual PC, which means I can increase the quality of the capture, etc. And there's other reasons as well, which I know you can get around by having a controller. You don't have to use a keyboard or mouse. And I know you don't have to sit at a desk. You can use things like internet and streaming and connecting up to your big tellies. But that's a load of faff. I just like pressing my one button on my box, turning the game on and playing it. But yeah, as I said, last couple of years, I have moved more and more into PC gaming to give you guys the heads up what to expect, whether or not any of these ports that often get put onto console are worth your time. And I'm glad I have. I've kind of warned you a few times now about games that are just a bit of a cash grab, games that maybe will still need a bit of work, what to expect with updates. And generally, I can give you better guides and tutorials. Since they've been out on PC, it means I can play it beforehand. So when you load it up on your console, you've got everything you need to know. In the last two years alone, I've covered over 30 different console survival games, on top of all the other PC releases that may or may not come. But I have never known a situation like this to be so light. 2022, as of this moment, is so, so light on survival. Take a look at what I was working on in Discord this morning. Pretty much, I racked up all the console releases in 2020 and 2021. Across the board, it was around 13 games with a few exclusives. This year alone, we've had Open Country, Last Oasis, Wait Survival, Eternal Cylinder, Rift Breakers, Chernobylit, Green Hell, Tribes of Midgard, Stranded Deep on Switch, Rust, Dragon Quest Builders on Xbox, Breath Edge, Subnautica Below Zero, and that's pretty much it. I would say I felt like that was a light year compared to last, but actually when you look into it, it's about the same. Now some of these games have been great, some of them are obviously in early access, like Last Oasis and Xbox, which is pretty dead at the moment. Eternal Cylinder, I never really had a chance to play just yet, and The Way Survival, I didn't get a key for it, so I haven't actually taken a look, and I was pretty busy as well. These, Both of these games are pretty niche, controlling a sugar glider running around as a creature, and Eternal Cylinder, some weird alien puzzle survival game. I would say that none of these are really huge big, except for maybe Rust, and Rust was a complete shit show. Console launch was disgustingly bad, and they've gone straight into just selling as much as possible skins without actually any decent content. It's three years behind the PC version. It's probably one of the worst ports I've seen in a long time. But there were some good highlights this year. Subnautica Below Zero was fantastic. Obviously the sequel to the first game. Green Hell, while still having some issues and problems, is still one of the best survival games going. And despite some tricky controls, I found it pretty decent. Chernobyl is a great little game as well. A little bit rough around the edges, but if you like kind of NPC and camp building and base building a little bit in terms of setting up where you're gonna have your benches and stuff, and obviously fighting and shooting supernatural entities, then that's great. And then last year felt like it was the golden year of survival games. We had so many brand new ones, so many ports. There was some great stuff going on. Drake Hollow and Grounded were great games for me. I found them really fun. And of course, Grounded did big things for me last year. It was like the most popular content in a month for me. Most views I ever had in a month. That helped massively the Grounded release and all the content I did on it. And I did vote it as like top 10 this year. Number nine and best survival games you can play right now. I would say it's now top five. You had more in-depth stuff like Space Engineers launching on Xbox, which had its problems, but it still has got an audience. And cult classics like Unturned finally released. We did have a bunch of games also releasing on the Switch, including Long Dark as well. 
But there were some notable fails, like Memories of Mars, which pretty much stopped developing the game literally only two months after its release. And that goes the same for this year's Open Country, which has just told everyone that they're not going to be updating the game any further. But now take a look at what's happening this year. So far, confirmed, and bear in mind what I know guys, it's my job to research this stuff and give you the heads up, Serpent Rogue has been confirmed as coming to consoles and PC next year. It's a nice little indie survival game, very different from what a lot of you guys might expect, and yeah, it looks like you're going to be able to tame creatures, ride them, and become sort of other creatures yourself when you transmorph into stuff. That's one of the few games that's going to be available on all platforms, Switch, Xbox, and PlayStation. Dying Light 2 is coming out in February on all platforms. State of Decay 3 hasn't been given an official release date, and because of that, you could probably say it shouldn't be included in next year, but let's give it a little whirl and say yeah, it will be. Lightyear Frontier is an Xbox exclusive, it's more of a farming game than survival, but again, I'm crossing them borders. Little Devil Inside hopefully will be coming out in 2022, they've just delayed it again, it was meant to release this year. And then we've got Ark Survival Evolved 2, it's going to be an Xbox exclusive and we'll find out this weekend I'm sure whether or not it might actually release next year or whether it will probably be delayed. And that is it at the moment from brand new releases. Six games only coming out in 2022 and at least three of them are Xbox exclusives. That is a poor poor number. I like said, I pretty much do these types of videos every single year. I tell you what to expect with early access release dates for PC and the games that could be coming to console. But this year is just literally so light. So uh, is there any positives about this? Well, a bunch of these games did kind of just appear out of nowhere. We wasn't really given a big massive heads up that they were going to be releasing on console. Back in 2020, Unturned popped out of nowhere, as did Wild 8, but Unturned hasn't had any updates for months. It looks like they're going to be spending even more money on the game, which was free to play on PC, when you have to buy a brand new map called Elva as DLC when it's free again on PC. The Wild 8 was done and dusted, didn't add any co-op support, and that was the whole point of the game. We knew about Green Hell for months and months in advance, but it did kind of just pop out of nowhere on Switch, and they ended up delaying the Xbox and PlayStation versions till this year. The same goes for the Long Dark, and maybe Space Engineers, that was a bit of a surprise, but we did get a heads up a good few months beforehand. Memories of Mars was a complete cash grab. They stopped developing it, as I said, a couple months later. No fixes, and it's just a dead, dead game. And if we take a look at this year, Open Country kind of just popped out of nowhere, as did the fact that Chernoblitz was going to be getting a console release so soon as well. Craftopia was definitely a big surprise. I wasn't expecting that game to launch on console so soon, as it's only still in early access on PC. We knew about Tribes of Midgard months in advance, and of course we knew about Rust as well. Breath Edge was another surprise, I only really got notice of that literally the week before its release. So you get the idea. There is hope that maybe a bunch of games may end up releasing. I've got 100 survival games in my Steam library right now. Lots of these games are dead or haven't been played in ages or can be completely abandoned or completed. I'm going through it and honestly I can maybe only think of maybe two or three games that possibly might actually do a port onto console. Atlas is obviously on Xbox, could it be appearing on PlayStation? Well they are about to start adding more endgame content to it, so it's a possibility that at some point towards the end of next year we could see Atlas finally arrive on PlayStation, but it's a terrible game at the moment. They've had lots of updates, sure, but the latest one has broke the game massively again on Xbox. It really isn't in a great state and it's just not a great game. Breakwaters is about to launch in early access next week and they have plans to bring it to console as well. But again, we don't know when it's going to be. Normally early access games are in early access on PC for at least a year. So I wouldn't expect to see Breakwaters hit console until 2023. The same goes for other games that you may be wondering I've been covering a lot. Games like Small Lands. Lots of these games have only just been announced pretty much. Or they're only just about to release on Steam. Small Lands has been delayed till next year, so there's no way that's launched on console at the same time. Games like Sons of the Forest, I know some people seem to think it's going to release on the PlayStation at the same time as PC. Nope. The devs have said they're going to go into early access on Steam. So that will mean at least, again, another year before they even think about putting it on Xbox or PlayStation. And bearing in mind, it took them five years to get that game out of early access. There's no guarantee we'll even see it in 2023. Starbound could possibly come next year. I've been talking about this game coming to console since 2016. I've had major issues with the creators of the game and then they had major issues with the actual port job 
It's been stuck in Xbox or PS4 uh, certification for like a year and a half, I kid you not. Whatever they're doing with this game, it's pretty horrendous than communication. And they did announce it as coming to console nearly four years ago. There could be possibilities like Scum finally leaving early access maybe next year. And they have said they'll look at games coming to console once they've hit that goal. And we've got a few things like Scavengers just about to go into closed alpha on Xbox and PlayStation or already is. But that's more of a BR game. Pray for the Gods has been supposedly coming to console for two years now. We've had a lot of issues lately where updates have been slow due to loss of one of the developers. But yeah, I reckon that might be your best bet for a possible release at the beginning of the year. And games like Day Before have announced consoles, but they won't be at release. It'll be Steam first. Of course, big games I've covered that have helped my channel this year, like Valheim, well, they're not going to be hitting console until at least 2023, because that's when they said they will work on it to coincide maybe with the 1.0 release of the game. But hopefully you get the idea. I am just looking through this, and so many of these games have got a long way to go before they're complete. So many of them don't look like they're going to get to that point where they're complete next year either. So what's the point other than making you sad while you eat your bowl of cornflakes maybe this morning? This isn't an advertisement for Geoforce now, I promise you, they've not paid me, I wish. But this might be the future for a lot of you guys, you may want to look into this kind of stuff. You can actually have Geoforce now running on your Xbox. Microsoft have just lifted some restrictions on their actual native search browsers, which means that you can now actually stream a lot of these games directly to your Xbox. As long as you've got a good internet connection, you could potentially go and buy a bunch of these Steam games Sign up to Geoforce Now and start streaming them. Valheim is one of them games, I do believe. That's what Geoforce Now is. It's not a rental site. It simply allows you access to the games you've already bought. So you would still have to go and buy a bunch of these games on PC. And like I said, you're going to need a decent internet connection if you want to play it on Xbox. People have even been joking that there's ways that you may even be able to get some of this stuff, like a PlayStation exclusive game on an Xbox. But no, not at the moment. Not unless PlayStation do add some of their titles to this service. And I'm pretty sure they won't. Obviously talking about their PC releases. Of course we've got Xbox Cloud Gaming which you can pretty much do the same thing but as it's all the Xbox Games Pass games the majority of them are on Xbox already anyway so there's not really much point in streaming it over. And PlayStation well yeah man being a PlayStation fan and loving survival games is tough business. I know that a lot of you guys have got no interest in a bunch of these games. You say you like survival but really you just like Ark or Conan or DayZ. I know there's a core group of you that really support and show the love every time I show off one of these new games and you at least consider it and take a look. And that's okay, you can prefer what you would like to prefer. But yeah, next year, it's just really light. There just isn't a lot going on. With Ark being an Xbox exclusive, and that is fact guys, it may only be a times exclusive, but it will be for a while. What are you going to be playing on a PlayStation next year? Dying Light 2, maybe? As a game I can see people enjoying for like a month, like most open world RPGs. And then obviously moving on once you've completed it. As I said, State of Decay 3, there's no guarantees that's coming next year. I figure we would have had a release date for it by now if it was. Although we've still got a few months left, maybe the Game Awards will actually give us some sort of hope. And I've talked about Starfield possibly being a survival game, but we haven't actually got proper confirmation of that yet. So that could be the long hope. I wish it was easy to say just go and buy a PC. I know how difficult it has been. I bought one recently or I built my own. I've still got all the video footage from it that I'll show you guys one day. And that was for my missus to start helping me and working with me. And to also have another PC for the kids and family to use while they're here. PC parts are incredibly expensive. You can't just run out and buy what you want. Your best bet is getting a pre-built one. And you can maybe do a decent job with some of them. My first couple PCs were pre-built. But yeah, they're still massively expensive. Of course, there may be DLCs and stuff like that. That also helped in the last couple of years. Games like Conan Exiles having their brand new map last year. Obviously, it only came out to console this year though. And Ark Survival Evolved, of course, always has a free map pretty much every year now for console fans too. And they did obviously have their Genesis 2 DLC this year. So I know some of that stuff's going to keep you busy. But if you like me, you like to see a big choice in games, you like to try brand new stuff, you don't want necessarily just be playing the one same game, it's going to be a long dark year ahead for survival fans. Maybe it's time you go through my back catalogue of videos, take a look at all of the 30 games that I've pretty much covered in the last two years for survival on console, and see if any of them match your interests. The shortage is part of the reason I've set up a second channel to take a look at more crafty farming and indie games. 
I think nowadays a lot of you guys only stick to one type of game anyway. Like I said, it's Ark, it's Conan, it's DayZ, maybe No Man's Sky. And you may kind of give a little try to another game if it's in the Games Pass or you really like the idea of it or it's cheap. But yeah, it's sad. I'm just generally sad. It means that I haven't got as much to cover next year. I could yet go balls deep on all the PC releases. And as I showed you guys, there's over 30 brand new games coming next year. So it's not like I won't be busy covering some of these. But the channel loses its appeal a little bit if I can't show some decent console stuff in my opinion. I like to show as much as I can. I don't like being some PC wank race. I try and show you as much gameplay and footage from consoles as possible. And so yeah, I'm praying that some of these games are going to do some solids and actually appear on consoles in the, that year as well. Otherwise, it may get good come 2023. We may see a bunch of games like Small Lands releasing. And as I mentioned, Valheim too. But yeah, I guess a bit of a downer video, but I just wanted to give you a heads up and your opinion. Let me know if there's games I've missed. Is there anything I should have been covering? What do you think about survival on consoles going forward? And I will be back as ever with the survival news you need to know.